I've had this 3D printer for over a year and I've never used real filament. Hi, today I want to talk about printing with filament made from plastic bottles. It's quite popular now, you can find many videos on this topic, but I think that in most of these videos they don't show you in detail some problems and difficulties that you may have when printing with homemade filament. In this video I want to show you step by step how I make the filament and what difficulties and problems I have in the printing process. Of course the first step is to find some plastic bottles. It's best if you find bottles without patterns and strange shapes. For example, this one is not very good for printing, but you can improve it a bit using a heat gun. The next step is to cut the bottle into a long strip. The best way is to use two like this. It's made of two bearings. The edges of the bearings must be sharp. You can make them sharp with sandpaper. After the long plastic strip is done, we need to make it into a filament. Most people use a custom-made machine with parts from a 3D printer. They use a 3D printer head with a nozzle attached. The nozzle has a size that is equal to the filament that we want to make. They also put a stepper motor and gears to pull the filament through the nozzle. Everything is controlled by a controller. So they use the parts of a cheap 3D printer to build this machine. You can also buy such a machine ready for use. However, I decided to use even cheaper way. Actually, you don't need these controllers to precisely maintain the nozzle temperature. There is a big temperature tolerance that can be used. You don't need a precise constant temperature. So I'm using a cheap soldering iron and I used scrap parts to make a nozzle. I also pull the filament by hand just using this chuck for better grip. Maybe the machine that other people build is more convenient, but it requires some investment. This is how the homemade filament looks like. It's ready to use. But before printing, we need to make some changes in the slicer. We need to increase the flow rate, because if you look closely at the filament, it is hollow inside. The plastic bottle filament holds less material than the real filament. So we have to make the printer push more filament when it prints. In my case I use this percentage. But you have to experiment with your printer to find the right number. Also this number may be different by using different kinds of bottles. One of the big problems I had with this filament was that the extruder drive wheel was slipping. The bottle plastic is kind of slippery. The thing that solved my problem was a dual gear drive. If your extruder drive is a single gear, there is a good chance it will slip and this will make a lot of 
problems on your model. The other big problem with this material is that the filament is not that strong. This is because it's hollow inside. You can easily crush it. This makes a retraction option almost impossible to use. Retraction means when the nozzle travels from one place to another, the drive wheels pull the filament back. So the nozzle stops flowing a big amount of material out of the model. Retraction protects your model from stringing. As the printer prints, the gears pull and push the filament hundreds of times. The gears press many times over the same point on the filament and crush it. Then the filament is unable to move. To prevent this, I simply turn off retraction. But this creates a lot of stringing and imperfections in the model. To prevent stringing, I use the combing option. Combing means that the nozzle will only try to pass over printed objects and will not cross empty spaces, so as not to dump material into the empty spaces. I print mostly 2D objects and this works for them, but maybe not the best option for 3D objects. But what temperature should we use? I still don't know. There are so many factors to consider. This material is not made for printing and there are many side effects of every adjustment you make. I can say that most bottles start melting around 230 degrees. So you have to use a higher temperature than that. This material has the property to crystallize. So there are two types of the material. Not crystal one is transparent, flexible and strong. The second type is crystallized. It's not transparent, mostly white, it's hard but brittle. The temperature causes the clear plastic to crystallize and become brittle and not clear. But it's not how high the temperature is, but how long it stays high. So if you print slowly, the nozzle will heat up the plastic longer and the model will turn white and brittle. If you print faster, there is a greater chance that the printed model will become transparent. But also printing too fast also creates crystallization. The rapid movement of the filament creates crystallization. So it must be some average speed. And this average speed also depends on the temperature and the type of model. You can comply with everything and your 3D model will still crystallize. If we print a pyramid, there is a good chance that the bottom of the pyramid will be transparent, but the top will be not transparent. This is because the bottom is wider and the nozzle stays shorter time over each point. Upwards the pyramid narrows. The nozzle almost stops at one point and this accumulates heat on the entire upper part. This problem can be solved by printing two pyramids. So the nozzle will go from one to the other and no heat will accumulate. But why is important to make the plastic to not crystallize? 
This is because the crystallized plastic shrinks quite a bit. 3D models printed with bottles have high tendency to bend and peel off the bed. Using a heated bed is also not a good idea because the heat causes the bottom of the model to crystallize. To secure the printed parts well, I use two things. The first one is glue. This glue is very cheap and I think with one such bucket I will print for two years. The second important thing is to enable the brim option and increase the number of printed brim lines. This creates a good and solid foundation for the model. Another important thing is to know how to connect the filament. Because one bottle is not a lot of material and you will often need to connect pieces of filament. I heat both ends of the filament in a flame. Then I squeeze them together. Then with a sharp knife I cut off the excess material. That was the video for today, thank you very much for watching. If my videos are useful for you and for your projects, you can support me in Patreon. I don't have a lot of extra videos and content for my Patreons, but by supporting me you help me to make more videos and more interesting projects. Thank you very much.